Welcome. In a previous video I took a look at this Jellycomb Bluetooth wireless keyboard. So I'll put a link in the description to that video. And this was provided to me by Jellycomb, but they're not compensating me for this video. And they're not reviewing it before I post it. And there was a glaring omission, I think, in that video. So this keyboard has three buttons here where you can connect up to three different uh, Bluetooth devices. And you can switch between them. And I think the omission was a mouse. So I bought this with my own money. And this is a Jellycomb Bluetooth mouse. Well, I say it's Bluetooth. It actually has three different inputs you can put into it. You can do two Bluetooth and then a USB dongle. So you could use this with a device that doesn't have Bluetooth on it. So I think this will be a nice complement to the keyboard. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description of both of these products on Amazon. And if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So here's the mouse. It has somewhat of an ergonomic design. It's, a, it's not quite like a shark fin design but it is a little bit thicker than a real thin one. Comes with a warranty card, a user manual. This thing's thick. It is multiple languages, thank goodness. If this thing was all like English, that'd be a lot to read. <laughs> and this comes with a charging cable. It uses USB-C, which is similar to the keyboard, so you could probably use the same cable to charge either one. Okay, so this has two channels of Bluetooth 4.0, and then it has 2.4 gigahertz wireless with a dongle. So you could have this connected to your desktop with Bluetooth and then say you go to a conference room and you want to plug this into a shared computer there, you can take that dongle with you and stick it in and it's paired up ready to go and then unplug it when you're done. So it gives a lot of flexibility having two different ways to input into this. And it would also work with any computer that has USB which would go back 20 years, easy. So the Bluetooth on it will connect to Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS. I mean it'll cover the whole gamut of systems. This would also probably connect to PlayStations, Xboxes. I did a video recently on the Fire TV stick connecting a mouse to it, although you can't do much with that. <laughs> but it'll connect to pretty much anything. It has three DPI levels, and it has a DPI button here. So it has 1,000, 1,600, and 2,400. It has extra buttons on the side. I don't know if those will work with all systems. It has a scroll wheel, right click, left click. The battery in it is 300 milliamp hours. And they say it can last for one to two months for two to three hours a day. So we have the charge port in the front here. On the bottom we have the laser, an on-off switch, and here's the little dongle here stored on the bottom. Oh, that's interesting. It's magnetic. You can see here it's connected there. That's cool. And that's how my hand fits on it. So I'm going to pair this up with some different devices and I'll test it out. So to pair this up we need to turn it on, like so. And we have the USB receiver is lit right now. That's the first one. So we need to press the circular uh, button here. There we go, we're on the second one. So it says press it for three to five seconds until it starts flickering. Okay, there we go. So now I'll go to my computer and I'll set it up there. This probably isn't gonna come in great the way I'm capturing this, so I'll try and describe it the best I can. So unfortunately you need another mouse. I have this other wireless mouse that takes a dongle that I'll set it up with, and then once I have it set up, I can put this in a drawer. That's unfortunate with a lot of computers, you need a USB keyboard and mouse to do the setup. So I'll go down to the start menu. I'll go to settings. I'll go to devices. I'll click on add Bluetooth or other device. I'll click the top option, which says Bluetooth mice, keyboards, pens. Okay, it came up here. It says M922GX. I'll click on that. It says ready to go. Okay, so now I'm moving this. Okay, so that's pretty fast. Let's see if I can change the DPI there. Okay, so I can hit done. So we're set up with the first computer there. So now my other mouse I can get rid of. Next I'll set up this Mac. So I'll hit the circular button again. It's on Bluetooth 2 mode. If I can focus in on that. And I'll hold it down until it's flickering. Okay. I have Bluetooth in my menu here, otherwise you can go to System Preferences. I'll open up the Bluetooth Preferences. It should show up here in a second. There it is. We have the same M922GX. I'll hit Connect. And the mouse is working. So the third computer I have is a Raspberry Pi. It's right here. So I don't have a keyboard and mouse plugged into that one. I I do have a Bluetooth keyboard configured on it. So what I'll do here is I'll take the dongle out here, I'll plug it into the Raspberry Pi, 
It does say jelly comb on it so you don't get it confused with other things like flash drives or other dongles. On the mouse I'll hit the cycle button till it's on the 2.4 mode. And here we're on the Raspberry Pi computer, so I can open up something here. So if I want to go down to the Mac, I'll hit that cycle button again till I'm on the second input, like so. There we go. Go over to Windows over there, same thing. So there we go. So I did some looking in the manual here and it says it takes one to three and a half hours for charging. So if you work in an office you could charge this overnight or over your lunch hour. Now if your charge goes low you can plug it in for 10 minutes, go take a quick break and then come back and use it probably the rest of the day because you don't need it fully charged. Because I'm guessing charging this for a sh even a short amount of time will get you hours of use out of it. So that's the Jellycomb multi-device Bluetooth mouse. I think this is going to be a great addition to my tech bench here. I really liked having that keyboard, but then I had to have a bunch of mice sitting around here, and it cluttered things up. So having two devices that cover three machines will really optimize my space. This is similar to how a KVM works, and a KVM shares a keyboard, mouse, and monitor between multiple computers, except this option you have separate monitors. And I actually like that because I'm usually using one computer at a time, but I may have something up on the other monitor I still want to view. Now you could still have KVM type capabilities if you paired this mouse and keyboard with a monitor switching device. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.